for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Man Cheese, as always. Got my first Madden 23 video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over free agency. I'm going to go over the top 10 teams that have done the most in free agency so far to basically make them look like they're going to be overpowered teams in Madden 23. Now, obviously, there's a lot of free agency still to go. Uh, there's still the draft to come up here at the end of April. So, if you guys would like to see me do more videos like this, you know, obviously, once all those things have played out, I plan on doing an update video. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section oh that's going to get right into the video now starting this video off we're going to start off with the buffalo bills the point of this list is teams that improved themselves the most not necessarily the best teams so the buffalo bills really didn't have to do much to get on this list they already have one of the better teams in the league and they made some major splash improvements like most specifically adding to their pass rush in vaughn miller but we already know they have one of the best quarterbacks in the game one of the better receiving cores in the game they did add to that though uh, with the signing of O.J. Howard, who's still one of the fastest and a pretty young tight end at that. So you can definitely keep him long-term and work him up to be your starting tight end, either between him and Dawson Knox. They're both about the same speed. They're both great athletes. They also made some improvements to their offensive line. They signed Mitch Morse, who I think was with the Kansas City Chiefs, and Roger Saffold, who's been in the league a very long time. So they made some meaningful updates to the line, 280-plus overall players, and that's pretty much it. But like I said, they already had one of the best offenses in the league. They already had one of the best defenses in the league. So if you add a guy like Von Miller, you don't have to add much to make this one of the most overpowered teams in the upcoming Madden 23. Next up, we got the Dolphins. Now, this team was already one of my more favorite teams to use because they're really a sleeper team. They have a lot of speed on the roster with guys like Jalen Waddell, who they picked up in the draft last year at 97 overall speed, one of the fastest receivers in the game. They went and added to that in a big way with Raheem Mostert. They only signed him to a one-year deal, but he's still one of the fastest running backs in the game at 96 speed. And you can see he's an A1 overall, so he's definitely a talented player. But when you have team speed like this with Jalen Waddle, who had a great rookie year, and Raheem Mostert, you're going to have a lot of people that are going to want to play with this particular roster. Next up, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, this team it was built for Madden success. This is probably going to be one of those teams that's trash in real life, but really good in Madden. I mean, in real life, they had the number one pick two years in a row, and it could happen again. But based off of the signs that they made, they're going to be a really popular Madden team. If you go to some of the players that already have, guys like Trevor Lawrence, I still believe if you're in franchise mode, you can build this guy up. Uh, the running back situation is really good with Jane Robinson and Etienne, who I don't think played at all his rookie year. So they're loaded when it comes to the backfield. But they went ahead and added some real talent, some real speed to their roster. And guys like Christian Kirk, who I could have swore was closer to like a 95 speed at one point. I don't know why he's lower here, but they added him. He's obviously a good receiver. Gives you a little bit more of a threat there. Zay Jones, which probably isn't much of an add at all. Uh, but then you get the tight end. They added one of the fastest tight ends in the entire game in Evan Ingram, who really didn't turn out in New York but who cares the guy's still young he's going to be close to 90 speed that's elite speed when it comes to a tight end they also add a lot to their offensive line with guys like brandon schrafe from uh, washington which was a good pickup on the defensive side they added some really good players too in the way of speed one more time with i don't even, I don't even know how to say this guy's name but he's a 90 speed linebacker perfect for a user if you like to use your linebackers if you don't use your safeties 90 speed is elite once again and they also brought in another really good cornerback out of Los Angeles and 91 speed Darius Williams. So you add him to Shaq Griffin, who's already one of the fastest cornerbacks in the game. And this team just has a ton of team speed, which is going to make them very desirable. Next up, we got the Titans. This is another team that's kind of in the Bills vein. They're already a very good team, a championship caliber team, possibly at least a number one you know, seed in the conference type of team, which is what they were last year. Uh, and they really didn't need much aside from adding weaponry around what they already have on the offensive side. And that's exactly what they did. I mean, they still have a solid quarterback. Obviously, King Henry is going to be the, the focal point of most people's uh, defense. That's why it's so important for them just to add a couple of receivers. AJ Brown's still one of the best receivers in the league. They went out and traded for Robert Woods, who's going to be very solid. He's coming off an injury, but that's not going to be an issue in Madden. Uh, as you can see, he's going to still be a very high, uh, highly rated player. Then you get the tight end and went and brought in Austin Hooper. He didn't do a ton in his last stop in uh, Cleveland, but ultimately he's still like an 80 plus player and they really needed a tight end. You can see there's nothing really else on the roster. So you basically added a good receiving core around one of the best running tacks in maybe the history of the NFL, and it's going to give you a complete offense. I know everybody thought that Julio Jones was going to do that last year. They were still a fun team to use. Obviously, 
you didn't do that in real life. But this is going to be kind of like that, just to a lesser extent. Next up, we got the Denver Broncos. Spoiler alert, you're going to see a lot of AFC West teams on this list. And this one here really just boils down to Russell Wilson. I mean, this was a team that for years, I've been doing this list for years, they've been on this list every year for weapons as far as like up and coming teams that just need a quarterback. Well, they finally got that quarterback in Russell Wilson, one of the best in the game without a doubt. He's going to come with all the, uh, you know, I mean, he's a little bit older, but he's going to come with all the speed and talent and throw power and, you know, all the attributes you're going to want. Uh, as far as weapons go, I don't think they re-signed Melvin Gordon, but I don't know if they necessarily need to. Javante Williams looks like an up-and-coming star. Then you get to the receiving core. This is where they're really loaded. Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, KJ Hamler hasn't done much, but he's still super fast and young, so you can work him up in a franchise. They're loaded at the weaponry. They did lose Noah Fan, who's one of the best and one of the fastest Titans in the game, but it's definitely worth it. On the defensive side, they upgraded their pass rush and went out and got Randy Gregory to put him opposite uh, Bradley Chubb. So one of the better pass rushes coming out of a 3-4 defense, and they also already have a great secondary, which is to me one of the most important things. With Sertain coming in, out in the draft last year, Callahan and Justin Simmons are going to have a loaded secondary, a strong pass rush, a great defense, and now a great offense. Next up, we got the Raiders. Now here's a team that went and made maybe the biggest splash in all of free agency they went and brought in a 99 overall rated player uh which wouldn't be the first time I and mean, they did that with antonio brown the only difference is Devonte adams isn't you know crazy so he should work out he actually played uh with Derek carr in college so i imagine that's going to be a very strong relationship uh but basically they went out and signed just you know just traded for a receiver and it upgrades the entire offense i mean when you have Devonte adams who requires double teams most of the game hunter renfro who came out of nowhere and had a huge year then you got darren wall who may be the best tight end the entire game that's all the offense you need i mean brandon jacobs is a good running back too but their offense is pretty loaded now the defense went out got stronger too i mean they brought back max crosby but they also upgraded on the other side with chandler jones which is going to give them one of the best pass rushes in the league coming off the edge on both sides and they went in and brought another young cornerback in out of rocky sin a former first round pick from the colts so this is a team that looks like they're trying to win a super bowl or at least push for a championship and they're going to have a very good roster that a lot of people are going to want to use well we might as well finish up the afc west and just do the Chargers now because this is another team that had an outstanding offseason. Obviously, bringing back Mike Williams was a huge story, but it's not nearly as big as the guys that they brought in. Guys around the defense. We all know they have a good offense. Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler. They have really good receivers in Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Their bigger issue is probably defense, and they went and addressed that in a big way. Bringing in Khalil Mack for just a second round pick. You can pair him with Joey Bosa for the next couple of years. That's going to be huge. In the secondary, they went out and got one of the best cornerbacks in the game in J.C. Jackson. One of the guys that gets the most interceptions in the entire league to uh, to put in the same secondary as Derwin James. I mean, that's four elite playmakers on defense, and they still have a really strong offense, which I don't even really like to spend time talking about. So definitely one of the best rosters. This is a team that's going to be pushing for a championship this upcoming year. And then last but not least, the team that probably made the biggest jump uh, in real life and in Madden is the Cleveland Browns. I know a lot of Cleveland Browns fans and a lot of NFL fans are very upset with how all this went down, but that has nothing to do with Madden. As far as Madden's concerned, you added one of the best quarterbacks in the game to one of the best offenses in the game, and also you added one of the better receivers in the game in Amari Cooper, but I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Deshaun Watson probably picked Cleveland because this team is loaded with talent. So if you look at the quarterback situation, that was probably the worst area, and that was Baker Mayfield. It's way better now. Uh, he's going to be handing off the great running backs like Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, which is probably the best running back tandem in the league. Uh, both of these guys could threaten to be league-leading rushers if they were both starting somewhere and not splitting carries. Uh, then you go to the receiving core. I mean, like I said, they added Amari Cooper, but that doesn't even start because they also added uh, Jakeem Grant, who, you know, I know he's not necessarily thought of as a, as a weapon, as a receiver, he's more of a return guy, but he actually did a lot as a receiver and as a weapon last year, and he's also 94 speed. Then you also have Anthony Schwartz, who's 96 speed, a track guy who they drafted last year. So that's, you know, a lot of speed at receiver. You go to tight end, they still have a David Njoku, but then you go to the offensive line, they're still loaded there. They're still one of the best offensive lines in the game. Four of their linemen are all rated over 80, uh, and two of them are rated close to 90, although you've got one superstar in Wyatt Teller. So an, a loaded offensive line, a loaded receiving core, and a loaded backfield. And we all know the defense is pretty solid, too, with guys like Miles Garrett, good linebackers, cornerbacks, all that. This is a loaded roster. So without a doubt, those two signings made this team probably the hottest team going into Madden 23. Still a lot of time left, though. Like I said, if you guys want to see me update this list as more free agency signings happen and... And 
you know, before the year, basically, before Madden 23 comes out, I typically like to do a updated version of this so people know what are the best teams uh, that made the most changes. So if you want to see that, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know what you guys think. If there's a team you think I missed, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching Mad Money Shit Out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.